Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here today. Amen. 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 Y'all ready to stand and sing? Yes. Sing loud. <coughs>
Well, good morning, Family Fellowship Baptist Church family and guests. It is good to see you all gathered together. Uh, very excited to be um, here this morning. Um, I want to take this time to make a couple of quick announcements. Um, as you know, for uh, for our offering, we have offering plates available in the back. Um, we also have a drop box on the office door, so feel free to come by throughout the week and drop things off. And then we also have online giving through our website ffbcjonesboro.com Also in a few moments when Brother Farrell gets up to preach we will dismiss for Children's Church so any children 6th grade and under are dismissed um, at that time to go um, so we walk through these double doors and take a right and follow the crowd of screaming excited children Children's Church um, With that being said um, if you would pray with me and we will continue our worship service this morning our most gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to worship you. Uh, God, I pray that, that you would be on the forefront of our minds and our hearts, that, that everything we do this morning would be focused entirely on you and doing what is pleasing to you, God. We pray that you would just be with um, everyone who is involved in the worship service, be with all of us in the worship team. I pray you be with Brother Farrell as he proclaims your word. God, I pray you would be with every single person in the congregation, that your spirit would just fall and allow us to worship you earnestly and in truth. Um, God, we once again just thank you for this chance. I pray that we would just be encouraged by your Holy Spirit today. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing rising. <laughs>
Joshua chapter 2, and we'll begin, or excuse me, Joshua chapter 6, verse 25. Joshua chapter 6, verse 25. Would you please stand and honor the reading of the word of the Lord? And Joshua saved Rahab, the heart of the lie. And her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelt in Israel even to this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out of Jericho. Father in Jesus' name, we love you, we praise you, we adore you. You are so good to us. Mercy and grace flow from heaven in our direction. You give to us what we do not deserve. You hold back from us what we do. Lord, as we gather together here this morning, I pray, Lord, your Holy Spirit would be in our midst. That he would teach us, minister to us. And while I pray for the corporate body of the church, God, I pray for every individual Give to each ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. Speak to them right where they are. Minister to them their specific individual need. And Lord, I pray that we will respond today, each one, to the will of the Lord, to the Word of God. Always, Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. Empty me of self. And fill me with the Holy Spirit. Then preach through me. Gain the glory and the honor and the praise this day in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. In the children's Christmas classic, and I know I'm fast forwarding just a little bit, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer found himself on the Isle of Misfit Toys. Discarded toys. Toys that were defective in some way and no longer desirable. However, in the miraculous hand of Santa, these toys were repurposed and brought joy to those who received them. The same is true of those labeled misfits by the world. In the hands of God, their lives can be repurposed. The useless can become useful. The messed up can become the miraculous. The terribly bad can become the truly blessed. And the seemingly worthless can become something wonderful. Can I get an amen? amen. This morning, whether you are a miraculous misfit or a misfit looking for a miracle, I pray you will find encouragement in the story Forgive my language of a hooker transformed into a heroine by God. My message begins this morning with the reality of a past that can be changed in the present. In Joshua chapter 2 verse 1. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Now the spies knew that as visitors in the city of Jericho, they would draw less attention, hear me now, in the home of a woman of ill repute. It would be less conspicuous in the house of a prostitute. No one would suspect two men visiting a brothel. Think about it. The people of Jericho had heard of this holy God who judges sin. 
So it makes sense that no one would ever look for God's spies in the house of Rahab. She was a sinner involved in a sinful enterprise. And no one would have imagined, and this is the message today, that she could be, would be used of God. After all, she was, the scripture makes it abundantly clear, a harlot. In fact, if you asked Rahab about her life, she probably would have responded, I am what I am, and that is all that I ever will be. I am a moral misfit. I cannot change. Let's get real. It may be that someone here this morning or someone watching the broadcast, you look at your past and you think, I wish it could be different for me. But I am what I am. It's too late for me. I cannot change. My life has been corrupted by immorality. I cannot change. I'm a moral misfit. My life has been marred by drugs. I cannot change. I am hopelessly condemned. My life has been captivated by alcohol. I cannot change. I am beyond redemption. I am so messed up. I cannot change. God could never use me. I have all kinds of skeletons in my closet. I cannot change. No help for me. No hope for me. An emphatic answer. Wrong. My God. My God is a God who took nothing and made something when he spoke the world into existence. My God is the God who took dirt and made a man. My God took a shepherd and made him a king. He took a farm boy named Amos and made him into a powerful prophet. He took a terrorist named Saul, you know him better by Paul, and he made him an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. He took a 13-year-old country boy living in the Langy Bottoms, cleaned him up, filled him up with himself, and called him to preach. And if, that, if our God can do that for them, do that for me, do that for many of those sitting here this morning, then know that he can do that for you. If God can take a naked lunatic living in the cemeteries, possessed by over 2,000 demons, and set him free, clothe him, and give him a right mind, then there is hope for anyone. There is hope for everyone. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, the old has passed away, and all things become new. And when we think about the transformation of Rahab, let me suggest to you four things that were imperative. Number one, let's talk about Rahab's courage. Picking up in verse 2, chapter 2, verse 2, And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into your house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman, Rahab, took the two men and hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wits not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went, I do not know. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which he had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. 
And I'll come back to this same phrase in just a moment. Rahab was willing to take a risk. She knew what would happen to her if she was found to be hiding and abetting the enemy. She weighed the risk and she found God worthy of her trust. Now here's the point. Sometimes if we're going to make a change like Rahab, we need to take a risk. Now let me say that again and let it soak in. If we are going to make a change, then we need to be willing to take a risk. But not only did Rahab demonstrate courage as a risk taker, her actions revealed that she had confidence in God. Verses 8 and following. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. <coughs> And that your terror is fallen upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Oh, that that would be the New Testament church today. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you. When you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites. that were on the other side of the Jordan, Sahan and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. Be for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. She looked at her situation. The fortified city of Jericho. The skilled military. The fighting men, the chariots, the weaponry. And with all of that, she chose to trust God. It's called faith. Rahab made her way into the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. I don't know what you're going through this morning. But if you will succeed, if you will move from where you were to where God wants you to be, then you must believe. Believe that He is able to do all things. Trust God. And He can change who you are and whatever it is that you're going through. Yes, for your good, ultimately. For his glory. But then briefly, and I think this is important to note, Rahab's charity. Verses 12 and 13. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. I'm not going to say this is the most important point of this message, but it is vitally important. Rahab did not put herself first. I can say and safely proclaim Rahab thought of others above herself. And I want to say to you this morning, as I would say to myself today, Real change, and I believe this with all my heart, real change can only take place when we begin to place others before our own needs. Oh, that needs an amen. See, I think one of the greatest problems in our world today, one of the greatest problems in our churches today, is that we spend more time thinking about me, myself, and I than we do about the things of others. And then lastly, Rahab's commitment. Verses 15 and 16. Then she led them down by a cord through the window. For her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you. Hide yourself there for three days, until the pursuers be returned. And afterward may ye go your way. See, to arrive at any destination, you must start the journey. 
You can think about it, and I guess that's good. You can pray about it, and I guess that's also good. But until you do something about it, nothing ever changes. In James chapter 2, verse 25, Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works. When she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Rahab is yelling at us today. Don't think about it. Do something about it. Now listen. It's not what you were that matters. Amen. Praise God. But who you are. And who you are under the direction of God, by the power of God, for the glory of God, will determine what the future holds for you. The reformation of the present can change the future, or it can bring confidence in the future. What you do today will impact your life tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, till Jesus comes. In Matthew chapter 1, we're given the genealogy of Jesus. Go back and read it. In verse 5 and 6, the writer lists three women. Rahab, the harlot, the wife of Solomon, the great-grandmother of King David. It lists Ruth, a Moabitish woman the grandmother of David. The wife of Uriah, that's Sheba, who was the mother of Solomon. Now each of these women had a sordid past. One was a prostitute. One worshipped false gods. And one was an adulteress. But their futures, and this is the amen, this is the glory, this is the hallelujah. Their futures included being a part of the royal lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. God took women who would have been branded rejects and gave them places of honor in the kingdom of heaven. And I'm fond of asking the question, why? Why do you suppose God would choose to use women of undesirable qualities to accomplish His divine plan of redemption? Why did a holy God use being kind those who were unholy? Could it be that He wanted you and me to realize that God can take the rejects of society and make something special of their lives? And in the process, gain all the glory. Amen. You see what he did for them? That's not just an Old Testament story. That's just not something in history. That's not something in the past we read about. What he did for them, he can and he will do for you and me. And so if I ramp this up, the problem is not who you are. Again, I stand here on this platform and say, thank God I'm not who I used to be. The problem's not who you were. The problem's who you are. Because who you are determines who you will become. Let me say it again. You can't arrive somewhere until you start the journey. So it's time, my friends, it's time, brothers and sisters, it's time to get up out of your seats and make your way to Christ. For some, it starts at the place of salvation. Just recognizing that you are a sinner. Agreeing with God, you are a sinner separated from Him. Understanding that your sin has not only separated you from God, but if you die in your sin, you'll go out into an eternity separated from God forever and ever in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. The journey for you begins at an altar of faith. 
Coming to the place where you cry out to God, I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sin. I believe in who you are. Come and live in my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. When you do that, you are who you were. You are now the child of the Most High God. Amen. Join heir with Jesus Christ. For, so, for some, it starts at the place of salvation. For most of us here this morning, it starts at the place of surrender. Somehow or another, I believe that many of us have bought into the lie that we can't be anything more than we are right now. Oh, my friend, you can be so much more. I don't care. Remember the sermon last week? Caleb was 85 and going strong. So I don't care how old you are, how young you are. I don't care if you're fat or if you're skinny. I don't care if you're ugly or you're pretty. It doesn't really matter. No, Becky, I wasn't looking at Jay. <laughs> it doesn't matter, my friends. God can take you right where you are. And, and I do want to say to you, you have not yet arrived. That's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I've not yet arrived. I, I, I've not reached the end. I'm not everything that I can be for the glory of God. And we need to like Paul to say, I have not yet arrived. God can do so much more. And we just need to come and say, Lord, here I am. I'm like the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'm yours. And see what great things our God can do. And so this morning, trust God and take that first step. The first step of salvation. The first step of surrender. And when does it begin? It starts now. Father, in Jesus' name, we have just taken a quick glimpse at a woman who is often overlooked because she was society's reject. She was the one most likely not to succeed. She was a woman of ill repute, a prostitute, a harlot. She ran a brothel. And yet, God, you reached out from heaven. And you touched her heart. And you changed her life. And she became the great-grandmother of King David. Of whose lineage one day would come the Son of God. And Lord, I'm just foolish enough to believe as I stand here this morning that God, if you can do that in the life of Rahab, wow, what can you do in our lives? <clears throat> and Lord, it's just an encouragement. Because you're speaking through the life of Rahab and you're saying, listen, I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. Bring who you are. Bring what you are to me. believe sitting in this auditorium this morning are some who just feel like it's hopeless. No hope for change. I am who I am and I, I'll never be anything else. God, would you break through and help them to believe in, in what you can do. And then be willing to take that step. That step of salvation, that step of surrender. And God, maybe this morning we all maybe ought to hit the pause button and look to heaven and say, God, thank you that I'm not who I used to be. And thank you, Lord, I'm not what I'm going to be. Because God, you are not finished with us yet. 
Lord, may you have your will, may you accomplish your way in this service today, in this time of invitation in Jesus' name. Stand, every head bowed, every eye closed. God looks at you this morning. You want to see an incomplete project, and He's ready to go to work. business meeting in here in the sanctuary so we would encourage all of our members to come and be a part of this business meeting um, this is the big meeting right where we vote on our budget for the year and look at our nominating committee forms for the year and get all of our committees sorted out we didn't have this big meeting last year um, we've just been sort of working with the budget sort of as we've been going and so I'm excited that we're finally getting back on our feet um, after all of this so make sure that if you're a member you're here um, if you're a part of our youth D groups that have been meeting, we are going to meet after the business meeting. It normally doesn't take the full hour, and so um, um, boys will be upstairs in the youth room, girls will be downstairs. Um, just meet for about 15, 20 minutes uh, to have our discipleship groups. Um, and then Awana will be starting next Sunday night at 5 o'clock, so that is exciting. All of our kids, we would encourage you all to be a part of that. Are there any other announcements or anything that I'm forgetting? All right. Well, God bless you. We're going to beat all the other churches to the restaurants. You are dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> the rise of the